So one of the things about living in an apartment is that not only do you have keys for the apartment itself, which I've taken care of with a smart lock, but you also have lots of these um, key fobs. So the key fobs open the main entrance to the building or security gates or entrance to car parks, whatever else it is. Um, and I have loads of these. I have some for my apartment building. I have some for work. I have some for uh, storage space. I have some for office spaces. I have stuff for um, college. I have them, uh, there are loads of them and I hate them. I hate carrying them around and um, I despise, I don't like carrying keys. So why would I want to carry a key ring? Um, so I'm going to show you in this video a way that you can actually get rid of these, but not only these, any sort of kind of RFID card that you have for tagging in or out of places um, or any kind of security fob that you may have. Um, I'm going to show you that it is possible to not only get rid of these um, but also maybe make them smaller or make them more convenient for your life um, while not necessarily not using them at all if that makes sense. Um, so I'm going to show you a way of making these things into these things and even putting them into stickers as small as these things which is really, really cool. Um, so I, I'm gonna show you how to do that very, very quickly in this video, but also stick around at the end because I do have one note um, of caution or uh, just a note that you should be aware of if you're going to do this um, at the end of the video. So with that in mind, stick around. Okay, so as I mentioned, you know, living in an apartment building, you have an awful lot of these key fobs. I have them for the car park. I have them for the recycling bay in the apartment. Um, I have them for college. Um, I have them for various different things. I have lots of these little key fobs. Um, and they are quite a useful little device. You know, they're, they're better than a key. Um, they're less cumbersome at times. Um, but I do find that I'm carrying an awful lot of them lately and I don't like this. So um, one of the things that I wanted to try and do was first see if I could eliminate these completely by using my phone. Um, the reality of it is I can't. So phones have Wi-Fi, they have Bluetooth, and a lot of them now have RFID, but they have a limited version of RFID called NFC. So NFC is near field communication. Um, and this works for things like Google Pay and Android Pay, and it works for limited transport services um, depending on where you live, but that's pretty much it. It's not gonna work for fobs, for security access and whatever else, because they're different frequencies, different standards, etc. Um, and it's just not going to be compatible. So these things, these security cards and the fobs, um, a lot of them use a frequency like 125 megahertz, for example, to communicate. Um, and they have a little bit of data on them that lets you in and out of the building or in and out of the door or whatever else. Um, but what people don't know is that these things can be very, very easily copied into something smaller. So they don't have to be carried around as a key fob. Um, and if you're like me and you live in an apartment, it's actually quite expensive to get these replaced. So the only locksmiths around me that do them charge about 25 euro for these. Um, whereas you can buy them online for a few euro each. So I don't wanna do that. I wanna be able to copy it myself if I lose one. Um, and also I don't wanna to have to carry it around as a key ring. I'd much rather carry it around as either a card like this, um, or even better as a sticker stuck on the back of my phone. So I have a couple of these stuck on the back of my phone now that replicate um, my key fob for my apartment um, and also my access for um, college so that if I can't, if I don't have my college ID on me, I can still tag into class. Um, so yeah, that's really, really handy. They're just two little M3M M stickers that stick on the back um, and I have them spaced a little bit apart so that way if I tag with one side, it's one thing and I tag with the other side, it's another thing. Um, so how do I do this? Well, first and foremost, you're gonna need to figure out what type of card or ID that you have. The reason I'm making such a point to this is that there are different frequencies, there are different security protocols, different ways that the chips are read and, and, and written. Um, and if you get a generic card reader and try and clone things, chances are it's not gonna work. So the most popular ones of these at the moment are um, HID. So HID have lots of different variations. You might see it on the bottom of the card called Proxy Pass or Proxy HID HID um, or HID 1325 or whatever it is. Um, and they're all done by a company called HID and the most common of them being the proxy pass. These are used for security gates, for apartments, um, for workplaces, etc. cetera. Uh, and the other one then is EM100 or EM1000. Um, and these are 
the same sort of idea. Um, they're just not as, they're a little bit more generic. They're a little bit cheaper. A lot of companies use these for things that need to be not as secure. Um, and they're spurious. So a lot of companies, a lot of manufacturers use these, whereas HID are the only people who make those proxy pass, proxy tag ones. Um, the catch is that the readers and writers um, for the individual ones of these are not always compatible. So if you have a tag that says HID on it and has the, the, the number, the, the frequency that it uses, and you get an EM uh, card reader, it's not gonna work. So the first thing to note I will say before you do any of this is figure out beforehand what type of tag or fob that you have. If it says HID on it, chances are in very, very small uh, letters or numbers, it has the actual model number and you can Google that and find readers and writers specifically for that one. Um, if it doesn't, um, chances are it's a generic one or an EM card um, and these are more widely available, they're cheaper and the readers for them are much, much cheaper, um, but they, those two are not compatible. So you can't read one type of card and write it to a different type of chip. It's just not going to work. Um, and the reason for this is because the chipset security, encryption, frequency, etc., etc., etc. So I'm going to show you very quickly two readers that I have. Uh, one that only does the more generic cards, and then one that does both the generic cards and the the HID proxy cards. So I'll show you those now in one sec. So this one is your generic handheld RFID reader and writer. Literally all this does is it has a read function and a write function. So you switch it on press it against whatever card you want to read. It beeps when you click the read button. It gives you a green light to say that it's okay. And then you press right and tap it against a new card and it's just cloned all the details. Whoops, we dropped one there. And it's just cloned all the details from one card to another. Now this one, as I said, is a very, very generic RFID reader. These are available on Wish, on Amazon, on eBay, everywhere else. They generally are about 10 euro, maybe even less, but you got to check very carefully what types of RFID cards that they use because chances are they will only do the very, very generic ones. So if you see it saying EM, um, that means it will only read EM cards. Um, it may say a few other ones, but if you have any proxy cards or HID security tags, you need to look out for one of these that specifically says it can read and write. HID cards, otherwise it isn't gonna work. So the other one that I would recommend is, um, I have a more complicated one here, and this is a 10, um, 10 frequency reader. So this can actually read different types of cards, including reading and writing HID cards. Um, and it's very, very straightforward. Again, it's got read and write, but I can also manually put in um, some details as well. So if the security number is changed or if I wanna change something on a card, I can actually manually put it in here. So this doesn't just let me clone cards, I can actually write um, some very limited numeric data to a card. And this one again is very, very simple. I turn it on, I select which frequency of card that I'm using, I put the card that I want to read on the back, it reads it, and then I put the next one that I want to write it to. So for example, I might decide I want to write it to a sticker one on the back, and I hit write, and it'll confirm that it's written it. And literally all it's done then is it's cloned the details from the first one to the second one. Um, so this is good because this one can read and write HID um, proxy passes and proxy cards. Um, it can also read and write EM cards, it can read and write um, a certain NFC cards that aren't encrypted. So NFC cards that aren't encrypted would be just the ones that have um, say limited text or a website address or whatever else. The ones that are encrypted though would be the likes of your travel card and your credit card. This will not be able to read and clone them. So don't even think about it. You're not gonna be able to clone somebody's credit card or their travel card or their leap card or their Metro card or whatever it is with one of these. Um, but it might give you some useful information like the serial number of the card or the frequency it's using. Um, this one also has a scan feature. So what I can do is I can actually put RFID cards behind it, click scan, and it will try and detect what type of card it is. So that's quite handy. So if you're not sure, um, these things cost between 15 and 45, maybe 50 euro. Um, but again, there's various different variations of these. So check, if you can check what type of card you have first, great, before you go off and buy one. And again, make sure that it can read and write. Um, one little note of interest is that there is a type of card out there, and actually these stickers are one of those. Um, they're called 
T5577, I think they're called, and these are multi-purpose tags. So what I mean by multi-purpose is um, they can actually store the information from different types of tags. So it doesn't matter what type of tag you're reading from, this can store the details from a lot of different ones. So if you're um, for example, if you're trying to clone a, a HID tag, this, even though it's not made by HID, this T5577, and I'll include links to these below, um, can actually store the details so you don't have to buy one specifically from HID um, because these are cheaper. Um, the reason this is interesting is because you can get these in lots of different variations. So you can get them as little stickers like these, you can get them in cards like these, and you can even get them as wristbands like these. So you can actually copy for example your security tag onto that wristband wear it around your wrist and tag open your door uh, when you come home so that's really really cool so that's a t5577 chip um, and that can actually emulate um, either a proxy pass a hid proxy card or any other type of rf within reason some not all of them again um, check which type you have first but it will do the em um, 1000 and it will do the the hid tags because i have tried those and it works um, so are there any other uses for this? Um, well, yeah, actually what you can get is you can get locks, um, specific locks. You can get locks for cabinets and cupboards. You can even get padlocks now that can be locked and unlocked with um, RFID chips. Um, so that's a really cool one. So I actually have a couple of these in my apartment um, where if I tag one of these tags against it, uh, it recognizes it as the security tag and unlocks that lock. Um, so if, for example, there's a cabinet that we don't want uh, our daughter to get access to, I can put one of these locks on um, and instead of having a key or whatever else, it's one of these little RFID tags to open it up. Um, so that's really, really handy. Um, so the reason I said at the beginning of this video is there's a little bit of a caveat on this. Um, always check with the person who issued you the tag that they're okay with you copying it first. Um, so don't go off and try and copy these and create thousands and thousands of copies um, because you might get in trouble. Um, and that's completely dependent on the workplace that you work in, um, the apartment building that you work in. Um, you know, I can I can go to my, my concierge in my building and I can ask him for a replacement tag and they'll give me one, but they'll charge me about 25 bucks for it. So I don't wanna do that. But I have said to them, can I just go off and get one of these made myself? And they've gone, yeah, absolutely. You can just go off and pay for it yourself because uh, it's less work for them. Fine, so that's okay. Um, I, you know, but if, you, if you're cloning your work ID, for example, they may not appreciate that. They may not appreciate that you have now created a second copy of your work ID um, because a lot of the work IDs use the same frequencies and the same HID technology. Um, so don't do that without checking with them first. Um, but if they're okay with it, you could potentially then get yourself some wristbands to let you in and out of work or let you in and out of your apartment. Or you can even, and there's another one dropped on the floor, um, you can even get these little stickers. Um, these again are T5577. Um, tags so I've cloned my apartment building um, entrance onto this stuck it on the back of my phone and now I don't need to carry my keys and I don't need to carry the key fob so that's really really cool um, last thing to note as well is that the, the and this is maybe a little bit um, in the future T5577 chips um, you can actually get them implanted in you so you can get subdermal implants um, and have them in your arm or your hand or whatever else um, so you could actually have potentially your ID tag or your key fob for your apartment in your hand and just walk up to your door and go blip um, and, and walk in using your hand. So um, that's not that expensive. The, you can buy the chips online for about 50, 60 euro um, and then you just need to find somebody um, who's qualified to, to insert these um, and they, they put them in the little fleshy bit between your thumb and your forefinger. Um, I considered this myself just to try it out to see what it was like because they can be overwritten and rewritten and whatever else. Um, but maybe that's a little bit down the line for me yet. I'll stick with just having the little sticker um, on the back of my phone. Um, but it does give you a lot of options. So I, I know a lot of people have asked me, you know, I, I don't like carrying these. Is there anything I can do about them? There is, you can replace them with wristbands. You can replace them with stickers. You can replace them with credit card size things. Um, but again, the most important thing takeaway from this video is check what type of card it is first because they're not compatible and the readers will only work to read and write certain ones so make sure you get the right one first um, 
and make sure it's specifically to um, the model number that you have. Um, I'd highly recommend though getting, if you are getting one at all, get a multi one, get one that's compatible with lots of different types because you may find later on down the line somebody gives you another tag for something else and you want to do the same thing and you don't want to have to buy a separate reader for each and every time. Um, so that's it. Um, that's a little bit about getting rid of uh, NFC or sorry RFID tags and things like that, or at least making them a little bit smaller. I keep dropping them throughout this video. I'm really clumsy today. I don't know why, um, but they are quite small now. Now you can get the stickers in lots of different sizes. And again, you can get these on Amazon. You can get them on eBay. You can even get them on Wish. Um, I wouldn't wouldn't testify to the quality of a lot of them um, but the ones I'm using are the T5577 chips because they're compatible with lots of different um, frequencies lots of different standards and whatever else and they are the ones that I've used to make uh, my wristband access to my apartment and the little sticker that goes on the back of my phone so look this is uh, probably more advanced than some of the stuff that I've talked about before so if you do have any questions on this please feel free to hit me up in the comments below and I'll help out where I can as I have said though please talk to the person who issued you with the tag though before you go off and start copying and cloning these tags because they may not want additional ones in the wild just because something can be done doesn't necessarily mean it should um, so just make sure that they're okay with it before you go off um, I would say for personal use they would probably be okay with it um, but I don't think they'd appreciate if you started a little side business of copying people's IDs or entrance tags or whatever else security alone um, that wouldn't be good so folks I hope you've enjoyed this video and uh, if you have please give it an old thumbs up um, so that other people can see it uh, and YouTube will tell people that it's not a bad video after all um, and in the meantime if you could give me an old like and subscribe that would be super um, you can also follow me on Facebook Instagram and Twitter um, and as ever anything else please feel free to comment in, in below um, and I'll reply as quickly as I can but for this week bye bye for now